Guys, starting off this video right here, you already know what time it is. It's time for another catch and cook. But uh, guys, one thing I want to note, I'm not going to show you guys too much about the catching part because I actually went out with my buddy, Zach. Happy birthday, Zach. But uh, <laughs> I was not able to catch any fish, ice fishing, because ice fishing is not my element. I don't like the cold. But uh, the Prince of Round Valley, you know, he always catches stuff, so he caught some... Um, some nice yellow perch I can see here. I got another one in cooler. And uh, at the end of the video, I'll show you guys another fish that he caught. That's pretty nice. But anyway, guys, a lot of you guys love to see cooking stuff. So I'm going to do uh, cooking with the yellow perch. I don't think I've ever done a uh, cooking video of yellow perch on video. So uh, yeah, this is going to be my very first one. And uh, since it's the first one, I think I'm going to do something special. I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about the air fryer. So uh, yeah, let's do some air frying today. And man, look at this belly. This thing is huge. Holy smokes. Look how big this top fin is. And then also look look at this right here. Look at that orange fin. It looks so awesome. No wonder they call these the peacocks of the north. We don't have peacock bass up here, but guess what? We got some peacock perch. I just love the coloring of yellow perch. You got the orange, you got the black, just like my casting knife here, my fillet knife. I haven't used this for anything hard like this. The only thing I have cut so far with this casting knife is trout, like uh, rainbow trout and lake trout, uh, some crappies, and uh, that's about it. So uh, yeah, I definitely want to use this a little bit more. And uh, someone posted a comment on my um, YouTube channel saying that he saw some bad reviews on this. But uh, heck, guys, you guys continue watching my catch and cook. I'll be using this guy. I haven't sharpened this yet, so uh, let's see how sharp this guy really is. I gotta tell you, he's super duper sharp. My neighbor actually, um, he actually took this off the first time when he uh, unboxed it in his driveway and he did it by accident. I, I think he was holding it this way and he yanked it out so very fast and he cut his thumb and <laughs> it was blood everywhere. But anyway guys, um, so yeah, I'm gonna fillet this. Uh, I got a tub right here, just ice water and some salt in there, basically my ice brine. I didn't bleed these fish, so what I want to do is I'm gonna fillet this, fillet the other guy, dump it in there, let it soak, get some of the blood out, get some of the slime out, and it should be good to go. So uh, yeah, let's start this filleting process. I'm going through my first cut here. Like I said, um, haven't really done any videos of cooking perch, and to be quite honest, I don't think I ever filleted a, a perch this size. I mean, I played with a small little perch back in the day, so f so long uh, long ago. I don't really remember much about. Um, you know, perch. But uh, so far, so good. So easy to fillet right here. So let me just do my initial cuts here. I don't. I want to do both sides because again, I'm not familiar with this fish. Just gonna get that piece off right there, and let's let's try this side too. And oh yeah, I got a lot of paper towels right here on the side. Still got some blood. You know, YouTube they don't like blood, but uh, you know what? This is cooking, guys. Man, this, this knife is still super sharp, man. Alright, let me just back this bad boy up just a little bit so you guys have a nice angle. Whoa, I just kick up some um, scales over there. Hopefully the wife won't be, uh, mind that. Alright. Maybe I should have just cut right through the rib cage and make it so much easier. This, this belly is just so round, you know, so it's like so hard to work with. Should have just cut through the belly. Oh, 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 oh. I got something to show you guys in a second, guys. Come on, Jimbo, you can do it. Let's call it a day. All right, there we go. That's the bone that's causing my, me issue right there. Right there. All right, so that's one filet right there, which I need to clean up. But guys, look at these eggs. Holy smokes. Holy smokes, that's a, that's a lot of eggs. Look at this. Oh man. That's a lot of eggs, guys. Look at that. You know what? I'm gonna pause this for a second, take a photo, because I, I might do something with this. Eggs on eggs, right? Okay guys, so what I'll do is, uh, there's some membranes here, there's some blood here, so I'm going to soak the whole thing in my salt brine too, just get some of the guts and stuff off that. That would be pretty cool. I've never actually eaten eggs like the eggs on eggs. I heard eggs on eggs are pretty good stuff. 
But anyway, guys, let's, um, I'm gonna wrap this up. This guy up right here, you guys don't need to see the rest because, you know, it's, it's, like I said, if you look at it here, and you look at the belly right here, there's not much meat at all. There's actually, maybe just a little bit, maybe because there's a bone right here. Yeah, there, there's actually a wide bone right here or something like that that's causing it uh, very tough to cut. So uh, yeah, it's good to know. Now I know the anatomy of it, I'll probably do better next time. I think what I'll do in the future is I'll just cut the whole thing and then work it through. It might be a lot easier. But uh, let me put this on, yeah, let me cut this and then come back and, and then I'll flay that off. All right, so I got that piece out. And um, yeah, let's do a quick little Remove the skin, and then I'm gonna feel for bones. I have a feeling there are some bones. Oh, hold up. I got something very interesting to show you guys. Let me throw this guy over there. So, look at that. Let's get a little closer. Some parasite right there in the skin. There's a couple, couple of them actually. Which should not be an issue. They say, um, as long as you cook it completely, this should be okay. But uh, I, I want to take this one out right here. Just, just to take a closer look at it. Did it smash apart? There we go. I don't know if I can, if I can focus that, but there you go. Is it alive? Is it moving? I can't tell if it's moving. I'm put on a board right here. I'm going to stare at it for... 15 seconds, okay guys, but you guys don't need to watch me. I'll tell you guys if it moved. Okay guys, so it's not moving. I don't know, maybe it's just an egg or something. But uh, likely there's probably a lot more in here throughout the whole thing. So I am uh, not gonna worry too much about it. First thing first, I'm a few for bones. I don't think I feel, I feel any bones, but... Um, all right, so all these blood slimes and scales, I'm dumping into the brine pool right there. And I'll... Uh, yeah, let it soak for a little bit. Same with this guy right here. Let's get this. There we go. Um, let's take a look at this side. I don't really see the, the parasite on this side, but it's hard to see with all the blood and slime on. But again, I'm gonna soak this. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the other one. And then once I finish doing all these stuff, we're gonna do some frying, guys. So guys, here are my fillets as well as some perch eggs. The other one was pregnant too, but uh, again, it was a smaller fish, so uh, I didn't want to record that. But uh, as you see, the water here, it is quite red and a little disgusting because again, there's a lot of slime, a lot of some scales, a lot of blood. That's why I do this little ice brine right here, kind of rinse everything out, wash it really clean. And then I do a second rinse and then I'm a pat dry with paper towels. The salt will help uh, via osmosis or diffusion, whatever uh, scientific lingo stuff. But uh, it pulls out all the impurities, such as the blood that's still in uh, the veins and everything like that. At least uh, that's what people have said. Got a piece of bone right there. But yeah, so um, I typically let this thing sit for not, um, not too long, like 15 minutes only. and. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I've been talking and doing some cleaning around, so uh, we got five minutes left. And uh, yeah, everything right here, nice and cold. The reason why I use cold water instead of warm water is obviously you don't want to cook the fish. You just want to use it to clean everything. And look at that, it looks beautiful with the after it's been brined. If you use regular water and stuff like that, it's gonna actually soak up water instead. And uh, what's gonna happen is it's gonna become plumped and soggy and you don't want to work with that. But uh, again, uh, I'll show you the next step in a bit. You gotta pat dry it. So uh, yeah, be back in a second. All right, folks, so I got uh, everything here rinsed out. I'm just gonna pop these flesh right on these paper towels. Uh, I'll do the eggs in a second. All right, I'm gonna take the bottom one, put it on the top. Pat dry these flesh. All right, so now everything is pat dry. Look at that. Nice, firm, yellow perch meat. Doesn't look too soggy. This one looks a little soggy, but uh, this this was a little weird perch. <laughs> I mean, if, if you guys look at the video right here, 
when Zach caught this, this perch was like, his, his whole spine and everything is kind of crooked. So I don't know if he's like sick or something like that, some birth defects. So got a little bit of scale right there and that's why we kind of wash everything off. But um, yeah, maybe because he's also thinner so he looks a little whiter. But definitely the big one, that's quality meat right here. I don't feel any bones here, so it's perfect. Let's cut these into little chunks because I'm gonna flour them and then we're gonna air fry them today. So let's try that piece right there like that. That piece like that. All right. These guys are thinner, so i probably gonna make them bigger. Is that, no, that's, that's not a scale, that's just a part of the colors from the skin. Yeah, these guys are thin, so gotta cook them properly. These are thicker, so boom, and boom. All right, I am gonna put some oil here. Air frying, you gotta have at least some oil too. Uh, I'm gonna oil these right here, and then I'm gonna put the flour. So I got some olive oil right here. And that's all you need. It may seem like a lot of oil here, but uh, it's, it's really not. Especially when you're actually gonna air fry, everything drips out of it. So that's, that's enough oil right there. Today we'll be using Louisiana seasoned crispy fish fry. Hope this will work really well for the air fryer. But uh, when I did snakehead fishing and I did some snakehead fish nuggets, it was banging. You know, I, I, I fried it in a pan and it was like yummy, yummy. But anyway, I am gonna take a sandwich bag here and I'm gonna pour the seasoning in here. And that should be more than enough. I might have put a little bit too much. All right, so get my bag of stuff, my good stuff. And I'm just gonna take these guys up. Just a few at a time, you know, not, not a lot. It's a small bag. Put it in the bag. So I'm gonna let this guy sit right here for now. And I'm gonna continue doing this for the rest of my fish. All right, so got my air fryer right here. Push that back for a second. What I'll do is I'll get a little bit of oil. One thing I wanna know for you guys, if you guys are new to air frying, don't use any sort of aerosol to oil your pan here because Aerosols, they have chemicals in there that may destroy the paint of your basket and uh, that's bad. They actually make some sort of bottle where you actually mist regular oil. But since I don't have uh, that sort of spray with me, what I'm doing is all I'm doing, taking a paper towel, soak it. There we go. And what I'll do is I'm just gonna brush the oil on so it doesn't stick. Put it at the bottom and a little bit on the side. In case I touch the side by accident. And that's it. Now I'm gonna take these guys right here and I should actually move this guy right here. Shift everything around. All right, you guys see that? Grease the bottom, hopefully it focus. So, now, there's a pre-setting right here for fish, so uh, I'm just gonna use pre-setting. So what I'm doing is, and I'm just gonna lay these guys down, spread them around. You don't want to put them too close together, but uh, this basket here is actually pretty small and I'm trying to get everything in here. So what I'll do is, for the super thin guys, I'm probably just going to stack them closer because they're, they're going to cook so fast, it's insane. So yeah, these guys right here, I'm going to stack them right there, but typically I wouldn't. But I don't want to do a second round because I don't have enough fish to do two rounds. But uh, yeah, this, this, this is how it's going to be. So let me... Without tilt, you know what? I'm not gonna tilt that. I'm gonna tilt the camera instead. So you guys see what I'm talking about. So as, as you guys see here, I don't have a lot of room to put the, all the fish in here. I probably have one little spot right there. But what I actually done was, if you see those fish that stacked to the right side, I actually put the, the thinner ones from the small perch together so that it just don't overcook. But don't, I, I already know that's not gonna be crispy like the other one's gonna be. But uh, you know, it is what it is. I don't want to do two cooking sessions. Hopefully you guys understand. All right, here you go. Now there's a touch thingy. So I think there is a, nope, nope, nope. Nope, stop, stop. Here we go. That should be seafood. Is it 20 minutes at 3.30? 
you guys can hear the fan kicking up. In fact, what I'll do is I'm actually gonna move this out just a little bit and I'm actually rotate it this way because I'm actually turning it all around for you guys to see. That's where the vent ventilation is at. And I don't want the moisture to get hit up top here. So I'm just gonna go sideways. So yeah, I'm just gonna turn it sideways for now. I'm actually gonna check it in 15 minutes. I'm gonna set my timer somewhere else because I don't want to overcook it. But uh, you know, I can always put it back in if I need to. So uh, yeah, BRB guys. All right guys, six minutes left. I kind of want to get in there. I can smell it from upstairs. Ooh, it looks good. But I don't know if it's like cooked a little. Oh, it's, it's nice and hard. You know what? I'm probably done, so um, hit the power button. No, I want to stop you. How do I stop you? Let's go. Yes? No? Anyways, let's take it out and taste it. I guess I'll unplug you. All right. All right, so look at that. That looks look pretty darn good. All right, so. Oh, there it goes. Woo! Take a look at that. All right, let's do some sort of presentation. I am no crazy chef, but uh, they say you stack it like that, you kind of elevate it. Boom! Doesn't look too good, but uh, <laughs> you know what? It's okay. It's me, Jimbo, the home cook. All right, fam, it's time for the taste test. So uh, before I even taste it, let's just grab this guy up here. And I'm not gonna say anything, just listen. Hopefully uh, the mic caught that, but that thing ripped out pretty good. Time to taste test. Wow, that tastes pretty good. Crunchy edges, you see this white flakes. Very good. Oh yeah, look at that. So I think the presets are just a little too much, um, but it just, it did cook really well. Uh, one thing I didn't show you guys on this video is I actually preheated the whole thing. So maybe that made everything uh, go a little faster. But the preset seafood, 330 degrees Fahrenheit. I said to 20 minutes, but I stopped at 17. I think I could have done it maybe at 16 minutes, but uh, maybe 17 to 18 if I didn't preheat the whole thing. But man, guys, this is so delicious. Not sure why I brought a fork out here. I'm eating with my hands because it, it, it's just just so good. It's like fish nuggets or chicken nuggets, you know. Check this out, man. So smoking, juicy, very juicy, shiny. Hopefully, they capture that on the camera. Look at that, beautiful. I hope you guys have enjoyed this catch and cook video. And like I promised in the beginning video, I'm gonna share with you guys another catch from Zach. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please give me a like. And if you guys are new to my channel, consider subscribing. Enjoy the last clip. Thank you for watching. All right, Zach with the first flag. My hands are freezing already. Ooh. Whoa, Pike. it's a pikey. Oh, snap. Heck yeah. Look at his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> hey, sweet. What do you say? Twenty five yeah, inches. Maybe. Somewhere in there, maybe a little longer, but not much longer. Gotcha. Twenty six, maybe. <laughs> All right, man. You guys got a flag? Yeah, that's a flag. All right, let's go over there. Yeah. 